So for ever since I had my refined sketch, I've been working in Illustrator to build that refined sketch with black shapes. And what, I, what do I mean by black shapes? It means that everything in this is just like cutouts of black paper. You notice how there's no white shapes at all? Also, there's no strokes at all. So to remind you, a stroke, just like I did in the last demo, I'll draw one quickly with the pencil. A stroke takes a path, a vector path, and then just like a font, you know, a letter that you want to increase in size, it increases by point sizes. But look how that looks very different than these, right, which have anchors on the inside of the edge and the outside of the edge. So what you need to do before you finish it off in Illustrator is to click on one of your strokes. And if you want to make sure you've selected all the strokes, you can go to Select Options in Illustrator. And you can go to Select Same. And then you want to go Select Same Stroke Color. right? And that will find any other strokes you might have in the image that are the solid black. Then you want to go to edit, not to edit, I'm sorry, to object, to path, and then outline the stroke. And that will keep the appearance exactly the same, but it will change your strokes into fill paths. So that's what I mean by black shapes, not black strokes, black shape logo. By dragging it off onto the gray, what's called outside of the artboard, that shows me I don't have any white shapes covering up black shapes, right? If I have white shapes covering up black shapes, that can be okay, but I need to cut them out. So if I wanted this shape, for instance, cut out of another shape, I might show that temporarily as being white. And let's say I wanted to layer that right on here. But in order to cut them out, what I need to do is select both overlapping paths and then use the Pathfinder tool, which you can always find under Window. And then I would simply cut one out of the other with the Exclude. So that makes a finished logo. A logo with strokes or a logo with white shapes is not going to work when we bring it into Photoshop in the ways we need it to. So I'm going to go back before I moved it. I'm just doing Command-Z a lot. All right. So that's my AI file. I saved it as an Illustrator file. And then I saved as, and I saved it as an SVG file. That allows you to use it in an online program called Vector, in case you need to work on it there. It's good to have it. And then I saved it as an EPS. The EPS file is the way that we move it between Photoshop and Illustrator. So you're used to raster formats where we save it as a PSD and then we have to do like lower quality versions for going online, like JPEGs and PNGs. EPS and SVG are not lower quality. Vectors are always clean, but they're, they give allowance to, to different programs. You can't open an AI program in Photoshop. And an SVG program opened in Photoshop works differently than an EPS pro, uh, vector file. So for this class, using Adobe Photoshop and Adobe Illustrator, we need to save it as an EPS. Once you've done that, you can close Illustrator. And your EPS will look differently than your AI file. So my AI file shows the artboard. My SVG shows it on like a piece of paper. And notice that the SVG has kind of all the same information in it, but it's going to look different. For instance, an SVG can't support the, the low opacities and transparencies of my sketch. 
And then the one we want is the EPS. So it will look like a sticker on graph paper. So I'm going to mark that with purple. That's important. And now I go to my next step, which is making this print ready and adding color. You can do color options in Illustrator, but you have to do it shape by shape, feature by feature. And because a logo is meant to be, first and foremost, an iconic pictorial shape, what I want to do is do color variations of that black logo within Photoshop. So I go to Photoshop. I don't open the EPS in Photoshop, otherwise it will force me to rasterize it. So I'll show you what you should not do. If I go open with Photoshop, it can do it, but look what it will ask. Before it can open it, it will say, what size, what resolution? A vector file has no size or resolution, right? It has anchor points. So I say cancel, because I don't want to rasterize this. I want to keep it as a vector just like the vector shape tools within Photoshop. So instead, I go to Photoshop and I say File New. I create the space where I want to put the logo. And I change it to inches, and I'm going to make it 8 inches by 10 inches. If your logo is taller than it is wide, and if it's wider than it is tall, you can do 10 inches by 8 inches. And then we're going to use my standard lab resolution, which is 50 pixels per inch higher than standard professional print resolution. And that is 350 pixels per inch. So like we've often done, 8 by 10 by 350 pixels per inch. I say create. It'll give me a white 8 by 10. I'll turn on my ruler so you can see. I'll make this a little bit bigger. It's an untitled new file. I'll get off the crop tool. All right, now I'm going to drag and drop, just like we've done with all our compositing. Drag and drop that EPS file onto it. Then it doesn't ask me what resolution should it be, what size should it be. Instead, it will keep it as what's called a smart object. And if I hold down Option, I can shrink it exactly evenly on all sides to fit nicely within that 8x10 print. And then I can use my arrow keys and move it up or down, or I can just do it by hand. And you want to find something without distorting it, so don't hold down Shift or it will distort. When you see it this way, what you're looking at is this. That 8x10 is the window that's cut in the mat. The black space around it is your black mat. So you are showing exactly how it will print and fit into your, your printed map portfolio. So if I like it there, I'm going to hit return. I place it, and you'll see that this is now a smart object. It has that little icon in it, which means it won't let me erase it or draw pixels on top of it or edit it without rasterizing it first. It will let me transform it, but I don't want to. These are the shapes I have. So that is my black shape logo. How do I save that so I can put it into Canvas? I turn off the white background so it's transparent. And then I say File, Save a Copy, and not as a PSD, because I just want this to go to Canvas, but I can always save it as a PSD first. I'm going to put in my semester code, and then put in Vector Logo Black Shape, this is my PSD. Where do I want to save it? I'll save it to downloads for the moment, but I'm going to move it into my folder. There it is. Do, 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 do. That is my working format, what I usually label with yellow. Okay, what I want to do to put it onto Canvas is to make this an online format. So I turn the background off, and then I say, I don't want to have to put in the name again, so I'm just going to open it from the one I just saved, so it keeps the name. And I'm going to say, File, Save a Copy. And if I save it as a JPEG, that's going to put a white rectangle around it. I don't want that. I want it to be just black shapes. So I'm going to save it as a PNG. And that's going to preserve the transparency. Keep the defaults. Now when I open the PNG, I'll mark this with orange, which I usually do for my online formats. 
when I open it up in preview, you'll notice it has this gray background behind it. That's because these are just the free floating black shapes. And that is what we put to canvas, right? The next thing we need to do is we're going to add color to it. So let me go to the canvas project quickly. You can go to assignments. This is assignment four. And where we post our final logos, you want to post your refined sketch and then your black finished logo. There's my refined sketch. I'm going to edit that. And now I'm going to post my black. So my black shape logo, I can't put an EPS file. I can't put an AI file. I can't put any kind of vector file onto the internet this way, in a way that it shows. So I'm, I use my PNG. And so I add that just like I've added things all throughout the semester with this little picture upload tool. I find the PNG, I drop it in. I hit submit and then I resize it to what's reasonable within Canvas. A little bit bigger than my sketch. And you see how it has that space around it just like I organized it in Photoshop. But that space is empty space. So that's a usable logo. So those are the clean shapes. Now, I want to do color variations. That's the third requirement, some color variation on this black shape. So I'm going to make a duplicate Command-J within Photoshop. I'm going to turn off the layer underneath, and then I'm going to double click on the layer to get to layer styles. Just like we did, remember, when we finished off our emojis that we built with vector shapes. If we wanted to add highlights or gradients or texture, so the first thing that's easy to do is to change the black to a color. And you can do that with color overlay. Click on it, you'll get your options. Let's just use school colors, since this is for a school mural. I don't know. So I'll start with kind of a sky blue. And then I can play with the opacity. So the less opaque it is, that means the more the the native black will come through my color overlay. But there's other reasons I do a low opacity. Like I might do 50% of this sky blue. And now I want to play with the gradients. Gradients are a lot of fun. I'm going to just take it to normal mode, and I'm going to look at all these different gradients. Sometimes it looks like this. Sometimes it looks like different folders. I'll, I'll just do something really kind of wild and very colorful. Let's do this, this kind of rainbow gradient. This one's even crazier. This one looks very institutional. And you can control all of these. So all I have to do is double click on one of these to actually customize my gradient. So if I don't want the blue in there, I can always change that color. I'm showing only web colors because it kind of makes it a little bit easier, but I change that to a green. If I want to change the purple to something, I can do that. You just have to hit OK along the way. In order to get to the layer styles, you double click next to the layer, oh, like right yeah. here. Yep. So there's my gradient. I can set its opacity. Right now it's at 54%. I can make it stronger, right? I can set its angle, which I definitely recommend. So that it kind of works with your logo. It's kind of nice to counter the diagonal of my dynamic logo. And then you can play with the scale to kind of spread that gradient through. And then here's my favorite thing. If I double click on the gradient rainbow here, I can actually change the spread between them. So if I really like how the yellow and the blue and the purple are merging, 